Ah, uh, hello Assalamualaikum. Yes, yes, boleh. Tunggu Rina kita. Okey. Ah, uh, okey. Assalamualaikum kepada semua. Ah, uh, pada semua pada penceramah kita, uh, keynote speakers, terima, terima kasih juga. Thank you so much to all our strategic partners. Kita ada uh, Professor Dr. Hasan Abuasan. We have here Professor Dr. Zakaria Abbas. We have Professor Dr. Mansur Abu Talib. And then we have Datuk George juga, Datuk George from our industry partner, eh, Datuk, Datuk George. And then we have, uh, we also have Sabah Tourism Board, Madam Doreda, ada tak dekat sini? And then kita ada Dr. Hajar Azraida, she's also uh, one of the leadership training um, agency leader. Okay, first of all, daripada pihak UMS, uh, saya kenalkan diri, saya Dr. Fatimah Midi. Uh, dan saya berterima kasih sangat-sangat to ACAP Akademi Kepimpinan Pendidikan Tinggi uh, because of this opportunity to grant us uh, to do this, uh, develop this particular program, eh, this particular module for SDG leadership. By right, as a profession, I am actually a rehabilitation medicine specialist uh, inside the Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences UMS. Uh, in which me myself, I'm also the head for Department of Medical Education for the faculty. And at the same time, I'm also um, person in charge, the head for Department of Rehab in the upcoming uh, hospital UMS. Inshallah, soon kita ada nanti UMS ada our own hospital UMS uh, fully functioning, hopefully, inshallah, by the end of next year ataupun a um, little bit, a uh, few more months afterwards. Okay. Uh, First of all, dan pada masa yang sama, terima kasih banyak kepada Profesor Madia, Dr. Ismi Roha, Muhammad Jais di atas, Hai Prof. Ismi, di atas kepercayaan uh, from ACAP to give us this opportunity dan terima kasih kepada Profesor Dr. Nudin Yaya uh, for for granting us opportunity untuk collaborate together with UMS. Okay, um, for now, uh, for this particular session, uh, it will be with me, so I can start dulu to actually introduce what exactly is the whole program, SDG Leadership Program. Dan kemudian akan diikuti oleh uh, Deputy Program Leader which is Dr. Jakar Dasan. He is actually Director lah kan, pengarah, Director Pengarah kepada Pusat Kelas Terang Lebat Sama Masyarakat. So, Universiti Malaysia Sabah ni is one of the um, partner dalam Universiti for Society di mana Dr. Jakaria ni is the Ketua Zone uh, Borneo UFS uh, dan juga memandangkan beliau adalah pengarah PKLM kelas sarian libat bahasa masyarakat so Alhamdulillah kami uh, Fakulti Perubatan dan Sains Kesihatan our faculty is very um, honoured to work together with PKLM for us to develop and craft this particular module Okay, let me share my presentation first uh, in the meantime we would like to say welcome everyone to semua participant if I'm not mistaken you all ni adalah selected participant from uh, ACAP in which you all adalah dia identify sebagai potential university leaders lah kan okay I'm so I'm so I'm so what do you call it I'm so honoured I feel so privileged to be among all of you with various background very uh, diverse expertise multiple uh, academicians future leaders from different universities all over Malaysia Okay, so we hope uh, the program yang kami buat ni, kami craft for this uh, CAP uh, together with UMS akan menjadi platform, will be platform for all of us to actually understand better when it comes to SDG and how it can be related to leadership. Okay, so for my side, I'm going to do an introduction about to share model about this SDG leadership program, New for Society and we'll explain further about content and output. Uh, and then afterwards, Dr. Jakaria will proceed with community engagement and a brief on uh, University for Society. Okay, so there's a few things that I'm going to highlight about here briefly, um, in which I will go one by one. So in the gist, I would like to explain about SDG leadership and the academia in brief. Of course, the share model that we are bringing in is, is a part of a creative way for us to actually embed shared leadership inside this particular module. And then we're going to introduce a term called Action Based Six Step Plan. And then we will explain, second, terangkan about the output for this particular program. So, program ni, because we're going, we are doing it as hybrid, face-to-face uh, -face plus online mode. So, we are going to produce two main uh, output, which is we have two main portfolios. 
and I believe everyone has already received uh, the soft copy of the portfolio. So hopefully, as as the time goes through, kita go through lah. As a, feel free to go through as a reading material. And then lastly, we will proceed with ice breaking in group. Okay, so a little bit about uh, SDG, particularly when it comes to university uh, involvement. Okay, so I believe in the whole global and regional platform, we have a lot of uh, either organizations, agencies that actually support academic uh, contribution when it comes to supporting SDG, Sustainable Development Goals. So even under the SDG itself, under the United Nations itself, they have the International Association of Universities in which one of the professor of sustainability education uh, that support education for sustainable development mentioned that higher education is no longer uh, preparation for an assumed stable future, but it is actually to nurture uh, individual and collective potential to live well and skillfully in a exactly already complex and volatile world towards human and planetary betterment. So this itself actually support the sustainable development goals in which we have 17. At the same time, we have few um, inside our own region. We have from USM, Apuchen, Asia Pacific University Community Engagement Network. And then we have also from UC Malaya, the Sustainable Development Solutions Network. And of course, we have here from um, w, uh, World Universities Association of Community Development, one of the universities in Indonesia also have this as part of the international platform to collaborate with many universities to support SDGs. So this is just very few that I managed to put inside so that uh, we have some idea that actually it is something that going global. It's not just within our own region. Okay. And then um, just to highlight when it comes to ACAP, because they under ACAP as what Professor Dr. Nordin just mentioned just now, it is part of the platform. Uh, ACAP ni satu, of course, academy untuk nature, um, skill leadership skill, and of course, to become the potential university leaders, of course, towards fulfilling our obligacy, social obligation towards community. So ACAP has come up with SDG leadership program. So it started all the way back about six, seven years ago, uh, six years ago, in which mula mula in 2016 actually from UMS itself. Okay, and then afterwards in 2017 we have from uh, Sarawak State University UCTS, and then in 2018 we have quite a few uh, uh, programs actually instilled under this SDG leadership program under USM, under IIUM, UTM, and of course we have from our uh, Borneo neighbor, which is Nibas. And then 2000, uh, sorry, 2020, I should, uh, 2019 is actually UTM, and then 2020 is UMS. So by right, because of this pandemic, to, uh, UMS has to um, postpone a little bit because of the pandemic, uh, COVID-19 pandemic. So we postpone the whole program until this year. So that's why we proceed with hybrid first, online, and then become face-to-face. Uh, Okay, so the program objectives for this particular SDG leadership program that we are instilled in this particular module is that recently, I would say about a couple years ago, in which uh, under Kementerian Pendidikan uh, Pengajian Tinggi, we have this um, University for Society, uh, a concept uh, based on the networking of a uh, quadruple helix framework for the networking and partnership between multiple stakeholders, in which we are highlighting um, university as part of the stakeholder to actually play a major role when it comes to developing community as a whole, not just nearby communities of the university, but of course in the whole region, of course, hopefully in the global standing. So with this particular concept, the University for Society, uh, we embed in this our program, ACAP UMS SD leadership to bring forward University for Society. And here we bring ourselves a theme called Share Model for Leaders, in which I will explain what is Share Model. So the main objectives for this particular uh, program is that we would like number one, because we understand we have multiple uh, stakeholders, multiple players inside this uh, quadruple helix framework. So we would like to inculcate shared leadership, kepimpinan bersama among all major players, so that we understand. Because me myself, as a head physician, I actually come from a from a specialty that highlight the importance of uh, appreciate and understand in terms of multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary approach. So when we have this multiple discipline, multiple expertise, we have to together work collaboratively. And here we would like to highlight the shared leadership component. 
And at the same time, we would like to come up with a new term called action based, in which it is actually for, for all the academicians to actually, when it comes to trying to develop a community towards sustainable development goals for sustainable communities, it is important that for us to formulate action based solutions, including knowledge transfer program, because we want to empower the community towards a sustainable uh, concept. And then the final one here we would like to highlight it is important to form networking through relationship building of course with multiple uh, players inside the corporate framework so here we have to highlight it's not just between academia and of course the community of course we have to take into account our government partners and of course our industrial partners so based on okay. this concept uh the from us, uh, we are so fortunate that I kept granted us the opportunity to develop this particular module, I kept UMS SDG Leadership, University for Society, in which under the UMS itself, it is under two main uh, collaborators, which is Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences from my faculty, and of course, Dr. Jakaria Center, Center for Sustainable Society Engagement UMS, PKLM. And at the same time, we're so thankful to our uh, Center for Strategic Management and Corporate Communication, of course, Department of Information Technology and Communication UMS, to actually come up with this particular hybrid module. Okay, so what exactly is share model? Okay, it's basic, basically a creative way that we come up, we develop uh, to actually implement the shared leadership when we actually try to comprehend and understand and to practice SDGs among the potential future innovative leaders, which is all of you. Okay. So share model itself stands for SH, which is shared leadership. Okay, kepimpinan bersama. And then we have A component, which is the action based. And then we have relationship building, the RE component, which is the uh, to actually highlight the importance between uh, major players within the corporate concept. Okay. Now, first, what is exactly shared leadership? Okay, to be honest, in terms of psychological side of it, there's a few forms, few ways of uh, you can see when it comes to leadership behavior. Uh, you have multiple types, including uh, vertical type of leadership. But we would, what we would like to highlight in this particular um, program is the shared leadership component. And under the shared leadership component, we have three main components that we would like to embed and try to um, inculcate among all the uh, all of us, uh, the, the participants here, the potential university leaders, in which we have few three, uh, three components in which we will try to hopefully can be trained within our small group discussion and hopefully we can try to assess and evaluate how far we have gone with this shared leadership. So we have transactional leadership, okay, in which it emphasizes on effort reward relationship, in which we also have transformational leadership. So here transformational leadership is more about having uh, the leadership behavior that provides vision expressing the idealism uh, how you would like to foresee your organization would go forward okay and then of course how the leader communicate with all the members in the team to produce more in towards um, inspirational communication and of course at the same time you would like this transformation leadership to produce um, high performance expectations so that the subordinates, of course, the members, the key members would follow the vision and mission of the leaders. At the same time, we would like to see uh, empowering leadership inside the shared leadership in which to actually develop um, team members to actually have the ability to develop their own leadership skill. So they can take turns to actually lead the program, lead the, uh, the task, the projection given, projections given to the team. At the same time, we would like the members to actually encourage the leaders to encourage independent and opportunity thinking so that we would like all the team members uh, to give input, to give creative ideas instead of just waiting for the vertical leadership to actually give ideas for them to conduct. So we would like the team members to also provide input, provide ideas. So this is the type of uh, empowering leadership behavior that we would like to also inculcate and train and hopefully we can we can garner and enhance among all the potential university leaders within the shared leadership concept. Now, how are we going to do this within our program? So we have three areas. So number one, we have the knowledge sharing session in which I believe everyone uh, based on our program book, uh, we have five SDG leadership sharing session. So here we have a lot of uh, our experiences, academicians, especially the senior one, Prof. Manso, Prof. Aslan, 
Prof. Zakaria, we have uh, Prof. Dato Lokman, Prof. Ramza to actually provide us, give us, sharing us experiences when it comes to uh, leadership, uh, shared leadership and of course SDG leadership in terms of developing the communities. At the same time, we have our strategic partners to also give more sharing um, experiences, how they have actually um, uh, conduct in terms of uh, developing the community together among multiple uh, agency key players. Okay, and then afterwards we have the, com um, what do you call it, small group discussion. Every time we have the sharing session, it will be uh, uh, completed with 30 minutes of small group discussion among each, within each group so that you can go through the what we call action based six step plan. So here we would like to see all the participants to actually actively take turns to lead this um, the, the the session, so that we can see the the leadership skill that actually we would like to uh, embed among all of you. And finally, at the end of the program, we will have a form of evaluation to see how the shared leadership has improved the team effectiveness as a whole. So we call it as LITAC leadership and team effectiveness effectiveness questionnaire. So based on this. Uh, the shared leadership. Next, we move on to the relationship building, which is the second component inside the share model. So, highlighting because we are bringing in the concept of university for society UFS. One of the main components inside UFS is that they are highlighting the core public homework, the concept itself. So, here we have four main. Uh, um, partners, uh, players inside the Coropa Helix, which is Academia, which is us. And then we have our government agencies, of course, uh, Dr. Wai Disino is here, he's from Yasa Sabah. And of course, we have uh, Madam Noreda, she's the general manager from Sabah Tourism Board. And then we have Dr. George also from the industry. And the most important part is the community leaders, the community members themselves. So they are the center of our project, our whole core business for this particular SDG leadership program at the same time towards the SDG um, uh, sustainable development goals. So they are the, the main focus for us. So that's why we also have the site visit to actually engage with them. Even through online, we're going to bring them to all of you. At the same time, we're going to bring all of us to this particular community for us to gain for, uh, to engage further with them. And the last component is what we call action based six step plan. Okay, so this is basically for us we are doing this as a form of exercise, as a form of task within the small group discussion so that each one of the participants have the ability to take turn and to lead based on this particular step. So we have step one, which is to address contextual community needs. Okay, so here we would like to highlight the needs for us to go from bottom up with bottom up approach, meaning uh, a lot of time uh, with my own experiences and of course my own colleagues experiences is that when we do community engagement we bring what we thought might be needed by the community we bring our own products innovation yes which is good but it might not be um, uh, appropriate for that particular community it might not be really needed by that particular community so hence the reason we would like to uh, go towards bottom-up approach in, in which we ask the community what exactly are their issues so here, number one, step one is to address. And then afterwards, we would like to prioritize what are the SDGs and the relevant targets. So based on the SDG community portfolio, we have already laid down all the 17 SDGs according uh, with their respective targets. And the step three is about matching. So here, because we are highlighting the quadruple helix framework, we would like to highlight who are the matching relevant experts from academia, from the industry, and of course, from the government. So that when we do this, develop, when we develop the community, we know that everyone is incoherent in consensus to actually we are moving towards the same goal. Number four, the step four is to formulate. So here it is important that we would like to highlight when it comes to empowering the community, one of the main important uh, core that we realize is that to have knowledge transfer program. It's not just about research per se. It's about making sure when the community gains something from us, it has to make sure that they know how to do it so that they can also learn to do it to their own community members. So that's why Knowledge Transfer Program is one of the important core uh, steps to actually produce inside the Action Basic Step Plan. So step five is about execution. If, because our program is it, it's not a long-term program, as, meaning we only have few days uh, with the community engagement as a face-to-face. -face. So within this Action Basic Step Plan, what we'd like to highlight from the from every group is that to come up 
with the how would you execute solutions and what are the potential barriers and challenges that you might anticipate when you want to deliver that knowledge transfer program so that when you have that kind of issues anticipate the barriers you can come up with the um, how would be the solutions for you to overcome that barriers and finally how would you measure the impact so because what we want to highlight um, we realize and of course, uh, with a lot of knowledge transfer programs, a lot of community engagement projects, a lot of them, are, um, most likely, they just finish within the completed research duration time. However, beyond that, it might not be, uh, it might not be sustainable. So what we like to highlight here, based on this knowledge transfer program that we are going to execute, how exactly you want to measure that the impact not just going to give you immediate and maybe moderate impact. Uh, but what we like to highlight is what will be the measurement and how would you make sure ensure that the impact will be last um, lifelong will be sustainable throughout many generations to come. Okay, so here sharing session, I would like to highlight we have a lot of sharing session uh, here five sharing session. We have Prof Manso and of course we have Madam Noreda for the first session and then second session we have Prof Haslan and we have Dr Wadi Sinon. Uh, we have uh, Prof. Uh, Zakaria and we have our community leaders here we're going to bring them to actually speak to all of you so that you can have interactive session with the community leaders we have our professor um, Dato professor uh, professor Dato Lokman uh, from the health side and we have our Dato George from the industry partner and then finally we have Prof Ramza our uh, TNCPNI from our EMS and of course we have our uh, Dr Hajar Hazraida she's from the training uh, leadership training agency okay so that is one part of how we're going to deliver our program. At the same time, we are going to have small group discussion as online within uh, these five sessions. After each sharing session, we have 30 minutes of discussion to fill up the SDG uh, community portfolio template. And at the same time, during the face-to-face -face mode, we will have uh, another three more sessions as a group discussion in which we will go through uh, the presentation and pembentangan from each of the groups so that we can bring some together. Okay, also at the same time, we're going to have living that visit in which for this particular University for Society under Zone Bonio, we actually selected, uh, University UMS selected Kampung Marakawarana to actually uh, become our living lab. And at the same time, because we are highlighting shared leadership more, uh, concept, so we have another um, great uh, community which is Kampung Kilimu inside right now, which is very near to each other, but they have very good shared leadership to the point that they are developing into uh, one of the best community within the niche, uh, our own country. At the same time, we are going to have site visit to our uh, strategic partners. We have inside Nusim Sabah, we have our own gallery as Hashim. And then we're going to have a uh, site visit to Yasan Sabah as well. So here we're going to um, uh, to get together, uh, including the industry, Datuk George and of course uh, Sabah Tourism Board uh, together with us to actually engage together for further understanding when it comes to um, Korupa Helix concept. Okay, now action based six step plan. Um, as I said, we are going to highlight the importance of knowledge transfer program in which before the University for Society concept uh, was introduced, we have already for the past many, many years, knowledge transfer program in which it is under Prof. Um, uh, Dr. Haslan, of course, Prof. Dr. Professor Dr. Zakaria. So they will be the, the um, the speakers to actually share the concept of knowledge transfer program. At the same time, we are go we are having this university for society concept in which Professor Dr. Mansour will highlight further the initiative for that U4S. So we are bringing this KTP knowledge transfer program, the concept into our SDG community portfolio in order for us to empower the community. So as we mentioned, we have this action-based six-step plan. Okay. And Kampung Maraka is the focus community that we are going to utilize as the living lab for the particular program. So we will bring you to this beautiful place for us to have a look ourselves and engage with the community during face-to-face -face time. So just to highlight a little bit, uh, based on the SDG community portfolio, everyone have the soft copy itself. We can read through and there are a few things, pertinent points that we would like to highlight for each step. So just we just go through as a group later on. Um, you can just read through and then afterwards during the group discussion after the 
next week sharing session we can start with the step two onwards because for the step one dr jakaria will explain further inside the community engagement part and of course we already put inside the sdg community portfolio template uh, what exactly is your issues that you, you need to address based on each group okay so just to highlight we have this eh, inside our sdg community portfolio okay so the program portfolio itself so here i would like to introduce two output for our particular program we have sdg community portfolio and sdg leadership portfolio just to highlight we have six groups all together in which we have all our um, keynote speakers and of course uh, we have also here prof uh, dr ho chong moon and of course professor dr vincent pang in which including our four keynote speakers which is professor dr haslan professor dr mansur professor dr zakaria and professor datuk dr lokman hakim so these six um, uh, professors will be the advisor for each respective group a group so um, we would like everyone the team members to be very participative very active and of course feel free to actually uh, get more input and advice from our advisors Okay, so at the same time, we would like to highlight one each group will have to produce one community portfolio. However, we have 42 participants, if I'm not mistaken. So each one of you will produce one leadership portfolio. So let me just go through what exactly is the leadership portfolio. So we have few sections. First is just our own uh, biodata participant. Second section is about 360 leadership feedback. Okay, the third section is about qualitative interview and the section four is about reflective learning. So inside this portfolio for number one, um, when we assess um, uh, 360 leadership feedback here, we don't want everyone to feel worried or concerned. Uh, of course, we understand the duration is very uh, short. It's not enough to actually assess each one's leadership. For example, it, I'm not at liberty to assess Dr. Jakara's leadership if it's just going to be five minutes, uh, five days of program as face to face. However, what we like to highlight using this leadership and team effectiveness questionnaire, the lead tech itself. Here, number one, we would like you all to actually um, assess uh, sincerely how is your own leadership behavior especially the component for the shared leadership. So we have our uh, questionnaire here in which if you go through the questionnaire within the SDG leadership portfolio, there are two sections. First is the leadership behavior. So after you finish the whole uh, program, including the face-to-face, -face, each participant should rate how they feel when it comes to their own leadership behavior. But number two, we also would like you to rate how effective has your own team performed, conducted themselves. So that's why when we ask for the 360 feedback, it's more towards self-assessment plus peer assessment when it comes to the effectiveness of your own teamwork. So don't worry, do not feel concerned. No one will assess uh, other people's leadership, but it's more towards teamwork. Okay, now we have collective interview. When we say interview, you would ask, how can you get interview if it's just uh, online or if you have the portfolio. So first go through the interview question. We just want to ask two simple things from all participants because we would like to know after you've gone through the whole program, what exactly do you understand when it comes to leadership and how it is related to SDG. And we would like you to list and justify what are the three most important virtues um, that a leader must possess, especially when you want to promote shared leadership towards developing community in line with SDGs. So what we would like is that we would like everyone, the participant, to actually do a video recording of yourself answering these two questions at most maximum is five minutes duration. Okay, and then send it to the secretariat. And lastly, it's about reflective learning. We have these three questions in which we would like you to just briefly type inside the SDG leadership portfolio in which I have shared with all of you. Uh, also, the Google link for the shared leadership portfolio in which we would like you to just um, write briefly based on these three questions so that we can get some feedback what exactly you have learned so far from this particular program. program. Because we are thinking this program should go beyond not just um, this particular uh, cycle. We would like it to go further and then we would like to improve further based on your suggestions and feedback. Okay, um, now submission of strategy leadership portfolio, we would like to highlight uh, the program we shall finish face to face on the 4th of June. So we would like to everyone to complete the template and give it back to us uh, to, through this email by 30th of June and of course the video recording as well. Okay, now the 
this will be almost the final one the SDG community portfolio we have three things here it's about the community the background of the group and of course action basic start plan so here what we like to highlight for all of the team members uh, based on the small group series of small group discussion that you're going to have uh, for the next couple of uh, weeks uh, you need to fill in the SDG community portfolio template and of course we would like not the same person to lead we would like different different person to lead every single session at the same time we're going to uh, request one of the participants inside each group to take turn to become the repertoire so that you can fill in the SDG community portfolio template and we already put inside the google drive so everything can be done as real time that and then updated as the time goes by so here at the same time we would like you to complete the whole uh, portfolio by 30th of june okay so now is group ice breaking session so here we would like after Dr. Chakaria has finished his presentation, we will do a breakup session. So each one of you will go into respective group, including our advisors will be joining with all of our team members. So here we would like to actually for all team members to introduce themselves. Uh, we have in each of the um, uh, group session, we have our own host. So she will help, she will, uh, he or she will introduce um, himself or herself as the host and of course we um, our advisor and afterwards um, followed by all the group members to introduce and hopefully we can get more networking beyond this particular program okay just to highlight the group members here we have our advisor and facilitator so we have prof mansour he is in group one we have prof haslan in group two we have prof uh, zakaria in group three we have uh, Professor Dato Lokman uh, for, for Group 4 and then we have Prof Ho Chung Moon in Group 5 and we have Prof Vincent Pang in Group 6. So they are the advisors for each respective group. We also have our, from our UMS side, we have Dr. Ilya Gudong. She will be the uh, assistant facilitator for Group 1 to Group 3. And then we have uh, Associate Professor Dr. Sach Sharisman in which he will be oh, assistant sure. facilitator for Group 5 to Group 6. Okay, at the same time, within the same group, each group, you have one host. So here we have our own host from UMS. So we have our uh, Pegawai actually is uh, uh, from the Pendaftar side and also Pegawai Science to actually help to become the host for each group. So in each group, you either have six or seven participants. So within the ice breaking session, uh, we would like every group members to brainstorm and uh, elect, elect themselves who should be the session leader and repertoire for each sharing session at the same time we would like to invite three from each group to become subject to authors because actually at the moment we are producing the manual for this sdg leadership uh, program uh, so there are a few topics that we would like to actually invite uh, authors from deaf uh, academicians from different different group to become subject to authors so here what we like to highlight is that uh, we already put aside uh, for each group you have your specific session for you to become the subject to authors so based based on this subject to authors it is actually a freestyle you can write up according to the appointed topic in the sharing session it's freestyle between 800 to 1200 uh, words so hopefully uh, we are almost completely done um, completely done with that particular manual book almost i would say almost 85 percent complete we just need a few more um, subject based on the sharing session so afterwards we can go forward for fine tuning and hopefully can be published by the end of the year okay so for the role of the members we would like to highlight here is that number one we have our facilitator and advisor in which acts as advisor in the discussion session so of course our uh, senior senior academicians here and then we have our session leader appointed to lead discussion so as we go along uh, week by week by week with the sharing session so there will be some of us who will go in and out into each of the rooms so that we can also observe how the members how the participants have actually uh, lead the whole session uh, at the same time, we have our session repertoire that we need your assistant to actually fill in the SDG template. Uh, and then, of course, our host will assist in terms of hosting it online and to compile the documents. Okay, so far, basically, that's the whole introduction to the whole program and the content and the output that we expected from all participants. What we would like to highlight here is that it's, it's, it's a sharing session. It's, it's a place, a platform for everyone to learn 
especially when it comes to leadership because all of you will become the potential future news leaders and at the same time we would like everyone to have to feel fun joining us here it's not something that should stress you out it should be something that you would like to take part actively voluntarily so that you would learn because based on this as academician you sh after this program finish we would um expect that all of you are well trained not just in leadership but also when it comes to how should we um, go forward when it comes to embedding knowledge transfer program to community so that it will be more sustainable in the years to come okay any questions from any from the floor so far are we clear in terms of the output what does the program is all about assalamu alaikum alaikum salam uh, my name is dr kimo i'm from unimap so i have yeah yeah salam alaikum uh, yeah, Kosalam. So I just uh, um, to uh, to confirm whether we are actually referring to quadruple helix or quintuple helix. Because okay. now, yeah, uh, understand uh, understand, Prof. Akima. Okay, so for actually within the Lucy for society concept, if I'm not mistaken, they they actually emphasizing both, in which it will be further highlighted by uh, Prof. Manso in his subsequent sharing session. But in this particular quadruple helix framework is basically a concept of networking partnership. Uh, quadruple, quadruple helix framework is more towards innovative approach. Of course, in terms of with all the stakeholders, but also adi, um, adding in the quadruple helix framework. So what we would like to highlight is that based on this, we have the main four key players, the innovation part comes along with the whole four stakeholders but we would like to highlight in this program is that these four key players the entities are the major key players as the stakeholders within this um, uh, community development so of course innovation come on board that become the counterpart helix from work so here we because we are you we would like to highlight the relationship building hence the reason we put that counterpart helix from work Hence the reason we invite all the stakeholders. You can see there are four of us within this particular sharing session. I hope that explains uh, your your question, uh, Prof. Nikma, Hikma. Uh, yeah, uh, so far okay. Uh, Thank maybe, you, Dr. Mungkin saya boleh tambah sedikit lah. Soalan yang menarik daripada Profesor Dr. Hikma ya. Uh, actually, uh, saya baru balik dari bengkel U4S uh, pada 21 hari bulan yang lepas, minggu lepas lah ya, yang dirasmikan oleh Ketua Setiausaha Kementerian Pengajian Tinggi. Uh, dalam program bengkel tersebut, uh, kita ada Prof. Mansur, Prof. Mansur pun ada dekat sini, yang mana sebenarnya quadruple helix adalah basic asas, asas kepada approach kita yang sebenarnya. So, uh, sama dia selepas itu kita nak pentahelix dan sebagainya, itu adalah uh, kita punya extra effort untuk bagaimana kita membangun society itu. But the, the basic thing is kita kena faham the concept of quadruple helix uh, yang part uh, stakeholder itu. Ya, yeah? terima hmm. kasih. Terima kasih banyak Dr. Jakaria. So okay, Prof. Hikmah, hopefully we answer your question. Uh, yes, yes, thank you. Thank you so much Prof. Hikmah. Okay. Uh, is there any other questions from all participants? Assalamualaikum, selamat pagi. Assalamualaikum. Alright. Uh, apa khabar semua? Apa khabar Dr. Nasir? Terima kasih banyak Dr. Nasir. Okey, uh, okay. okay, uh, saya uh, Umi Nur Nazahia daripada Unimap. Uh, boleh panggil saya Umi je. Okey, uh, saya ada satu soalan. Saya tertarik dengan subject subject authors. Hmm. Jika hasil daripada subject authors, which is yang apa yang saya faham adalah berbentuk artikel lah. Uh, 100 to uh, uh, 1,200 words tu kan? Ya, yeah, betul. So, uh, nanti dia akan belong to uh, ACAC and UMS ataupun uh, kalau saya yang menulis, uh, saya boleh uh, republish dia balik. Okay, uh, good question. Soalan yang sangat bagus, Dr. Umi. Okay, uh, begini, dari segi konsep pembikinan uh, to actually producing this book, it is wholly under ACAC. Of course, it will be published insyaAllah by UMS Publisher but it is wholly under ACAP. So even for me, Masa, Dr. Jakar, of course, we invite all the subject to authors. We will become the authors for that particular uh, chapters. Um, but to reproduce, uh, I think it will go with the same concept lah. Kalau kita lah kita nak produce anything, it might, we have to see sources, cited, something like that. I think it has to go with permission from ACAP. It's not... Uh, it's not something that we can freely publish. Uh, 
what do you think dr jakaria i think that that's the rules and regulation saya setuju dengan dr fatima <laughs> Okay, so hopefully uh, Dr. Umi, please uh, bunyi macam bersemangat nak masuk kau. Let's join. Thank you Dr. Umi for the question. Okay. Terima kasih. Okay. Uh, satu lagi soalan. Uh, back I to see. the Korea-Pergilik punya model. Dari segi pelaksanaan atas dokumen, adakah kita menggunakan template CE model sebagaimana yang digunakan dalam sulam? Okay, benda ni... Uh, kalau Dr. Umi, uh, that's a good question. Okay, kalau Dr. Umi perasan dalam uh, kami dah already uh, put aside SDG community portfolio template kan. So actually it's just a very very basic basic draft. We put inside a table to show from each uh, entity who will be the main key players or experts that you would like to bring in. But if you feel because I believe when we ask uh, ACAP to actually uh, select who are the potential industry leaders untuk masuk program ni, we choose those yang ada some experience with community engagement. So if if you have this uh, concept that you like to bring in, of course feel free, no problem to actually stop you from doing that. Lagi bagus, in fact maybe I would say that itself you can even lead the session for that particular step. So actually maybe we can also teach among the team members. Hmm. But from our concept, we just want to highlight first about the quadruple helix framework because um, a lot of our potential industry leaders here that we select, some of us still young, they would like, we would like to learn more about this. Okay. Hopefully okay. that clarifies it, Dr. Umi. Right. Okay. Dr. Fatima. Dr. Umi. Dr. Fatima. Saya. Uh, actually, actually, yeah. yang yang dia mention ini adalah lah. Lam, I actually uh, saya tambah sedikit lah. Sorry ya, tu yang terang. Terima kasih banyak, Pak Pak Sulam. Sila, sila. Sulam, Sulam actually uh, program dengan komuniti bersama pelajar yang diberi unit dalam markah uh, akhir khusus khusus uh, dalam program tersebut. Uh, jadi sebenarnya Prof Mansur pun sudah kita selalu bincang dengan Prof Mansur berkenaan ini. UFO adalah sebenarnya payung uh, yang mengambil kira di bawah dia adalah sulam dan hmm. juga uh, University Co. Ha, itu. Hmm. So sebenarnya UFO S ni dia punya payung lah. Ha, itu terima kasih. Hmm. Betul Prof. Terima kasih banyak Prof Oswal dengan input tersebut. Uh, Dr. Fatima. Ya yes, saya. Assalamualaikum Prof Mansur. Waalaikumsalam. Mansur sini. Assalamualaikum Prof. Mungkin saya add on soalan tadi tentang quadruple helix tu. So uh, quadruple helix tu bukan saja berlaku dalam empat uh, yang quadruple tu empat lah kan. Tapi mm -hmm. juga berlaku dalam dalam universiti tu dalam IPT. Dalam universiti pun berlaku quadruple helix juga. Seperti mm -hmm. mana yang uh, Prof Oswal mentioned. So yang empat itu, apa, apa yang empat dalam universiti itu adalah empat portfolio utama universiti yang biasa kita dengar lah. Uh, pertamanya pengajaran dan pembelajaran tu yang ada sulam tadi itu. Mm -hmm. uh, yang portfolio tentang entiti pengajaran sebab tu mana-mana U4S punya program mesti melibatkan pelajar mm -hmm. yang sulam, pelajar yang akademik. Nanti saya bincangkan nanti dalam saya punya next week. Uh, satu lagi adalah HEPA, Hal Awal Pelajar dan Alumni. Itu di bawah payung sekolahku, universitiku. Mm. Kemudian jaringan industri dan masyarakat yang most of us are now involving and the other the other the other helix is uh, penyelidikan dan inovasi. So within that uh, kita punya quadruple helix tu ada quadruple lagi dalam dalam universiti sendiri. That to be recognized as university for society punya activity lah. Okay. Thank you so much Prof Manso. So untuk makluman semua, Prof Mansur is one of our keynote speaker. He will start first next week insyaAllah 4th of May. So Prof Mansur akan explain further lah about industry for society concept. Thank you so much Prof Mansur. Uh, any other question from the members, from participants, kawan-kawan semua? Assalamualaikum. Kalau tak ada lagi soalan. Eh kalau tak ada orang nak tanya, I have one more question. Boleh, uh, boleh Prof. Oh video lah nanti kan kata. Uh, okay, so uh, <coughs> kalau kata kita nak bring in our what uh, from industry or anyone yang nak sponsor later, right? Uh, are they entitled for single double tax? Uh, apa pengecualian ataupun uh, double tax? Because oh. 
So, uh, because in our in, uh, because in our university in Unimed, we have uh, we are practicing the uh, double tax exemption. Uh, so I think it will be more, you know, attractive to the who does not what sponsorship lah. Okay. okay. Okay, thank, thank you so much, Prof. Hakima. That, that's a very good question. Okay, dari segi Dr. Chakaya. Okay. Uh, mungkin uh, untuk sesi yang ini, kita lebih fokus kepada uh, perjalanan aktiviti, eh, program. Jadi soalan-soalan tadi itu soalan-soalan yang sangat menarik. Kita mempunyai apa nih sesi-sesi uh, yang berkenaan. Jadi soalan-soalan yang begitu itu mungkin kita akan uh, tangguhkan. Uh, dalam uh, sesi yang berkenaan lah. sebagai contoh mungkin soalan Dr. Hakimah itu dalam sesi Plot Mansur nanti. Jadi kita akan mm -hmm. bincang lebih lanjut di situ sebab kita nak pastikan program kita berjalan lancar hari ini iaitu penerangan tentang model ya. Saya minta maaf Dr. Hakimah dan yang lain-lain supaya kita ikut masa yang diperuntukkan. Saya dah tak sabar nak membetang ni. Uh, <laughs> okay, terima kasih banyak Prof. Hakimah. Yes, that's a very good question. Nanti kami akan uh, moderatekan masa session dengan keynote Uh, speaker nanti eh. Uh. Sure. Sebab takut salah info juga sebab kami kena bagi info yang betul nanti ni eh. Okay. So saya rasa for now uh, untuk makluman saya akan share nanti slide presentation dengan semua dalam main group. Uh, for now saya jemput Dr. Jakarta Dasan untuk for his next session about community engagement and then afterwards insyaAllah kita akan buat breakout session for ice breaking within group. Terima kasih banyak.